You could reverse every single phrase of that solo, but if you phrase it the way that he does, it's still gonna work. Because it's not about the order of the notes, it's just like the way he puts it is, it's that, it's everything about that solo. What's up guys, my name is Guillaume and welcome to Thomas Guitars and Basses in this new episode of Hear the Tone. Now this week is a little bit special, so if you're not familiar with the format, what I usually do is take bits of legendary songs and try to give you all the tools you need to hit the tone. You get to choose what song I'm covering next by just putting it in the comment section down below. But this week is a little bit special as I was saying because we're celebrating Mr. David Gilmour's birthday. I cannot stress enough how much Pink Floyd means to me. I've already covered uh, at least one song in, uh, in Hit The Tone, if you wanna check it out, it'll be linked somewhere. But this is the band that soundtracked my entire childhood. This was the one band that my dad was listening to. They, they were the only CDs that we had at home and the only cassettes before that were Pink Floyd. I know I'm not gonna do this song justice for once. I know it from the start but I'm gonna give it everything I have. Because we're celebrating David Gilmour's birthday, you might have noticed that we're releasing a bunch of different videos uh, centered around Pink Floyd in general. There's gonna be some bass videos, there's gonna be a video with Chris and I presenting our favorite sounds, and I already used Comfortably Numb for me, because to me this is the highest level of what music can be. I put together a rig to get close to that sound using a bunch of different pedals, and a different amp. Pretty much everything except for the guitar was completely different. So I'd really recommend you go check out that video to see a completely different way of getting to that sound. But for today, let's focus on what's here. We're going to start with the guitar, obviously, and I'll be using my Fender uh, 62 reissue Stratocaster. I know it's not the Black Strat, it's not a maple neck, it's not the right pickups either. However, my bridge pickup is relatively higher output than any of the others, which I think is going to match David Gilmour's use of a Seymour Duncan uh, pickup in the bridge as well, because of that higher output, and because that's where the solo lives. It's in the bridge pickup. It doesn't need to be a Strat by any means. I think even though the mid-range is going to sit differently, if you have any sort of a Telecaster or maybe a Dan Electro guitar, anything that's got single coils in the bridge position uh, is going to get you somewhat close. To that sound. So that's my guitar for the day and let's go through the amp and pedal setup. Now David Gilmour famously used the Big Muff Ram's Head fuzz on that particular guitar solo and then going from that fuzz into a Leslie cab on one side and a high watt stack uh, on the other. A very British voiced um, kind of amplifier. That being said, because of the amount of processing that is being done on these songs in the mix and the mastering process and the remastering process and all of that, to me, that solo doesn't sound anything like a fuzz into a British amp. And it's really weird to say, and maybe it's because I haven't found the right fuzz. I've tried the Big Muff Ram's Head 
uh, the newer version, obviously. Tried a bunch of different options, the Keeley uh, dark side, which is uh, made for that particular sound too. But to me, didn't really cut it. They were too fuzzy. They were too, not enough present in the mid range. And that's something that I still don't understand how that gear was used on that solo to sound the way that it does. Enough chit chat though. For the day and to get the sound that you've heard in the beginning of that video, I'm using two pedals, the DNM Drive by Keely Electronics, as well as the Caverns Delay and Reverb. I've got, uh, you'll have the controls on the screen, obviously. I have it dialed in pretty gaily on Dan's side and just boosting it with the mic side of it. You could achieve the same kind of result with a rat-esque kind of pedal boosted by a clean overdrive. That's pretty much, in big lines at least, uh, what that pedal is. So you do have that very edgy, almost fuzzy kind of grit to the distortion structure, but with enough control on the mid-range that this pedal, at least to me, just works, and it's awesome. Uh, the Caverns, I'm going with a spring reverb, fairly generous on that, but not too much of a decay to go in, like, in the way of the solo, as well as the light side of the delay, uh, which is just a lighter form of the repeat. And I'm sending both of them to the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, as usual. The controls will be on your screen. This amp is phenomenal. And it's just a great pedal platform and it allows you to go pretty much anywhere. So not choosing it for the American sort of sound that there might be to it, because that's not what we're aiming for. We just want to let the pedal speak at this point. But with all that said, this guitar into these pedals, into that amp is going to take me there. <laughs> It's always a lot harder to say outside of the mix, obviously, and I don't, I know it's not going to sound like David Gilmour exactly, because there's too much around just the gear to rely on that and dare say that this is his sound, but I think it really matches the idea of that particular solo and allows you to phrase it just the right way to get in the right ballpark. But with all that said, let's jump onto the final part of that video, which as usual is the most important and is how to play the solo. And again, for this episode, something a little bit special because I'm not gonna go uh, as I usually do into all the fretting details and the picking details of that solo because there's so much to it, it would take forever. The tabs will be linked in the description box down below if you want to learn exactly where to put your fingers. Obviously, you do need to do that to play the song, but as Mick and Dan from that pedal show phrased it a couple of weeks ago now when they did Gilmore Stone phrasing sort of thing is that you can learn his solos, you can learn his notes, you can learn his sound, but it will lead you absolutely nowhere if you don't know how to phrase those notes and how to phrase those lead parts. And that's something that I couldn't possibly tell you or even less so teach you through a video. The sound, or at least the general idea of the sound that will allow you to let that phrasing happen is here. Take that, learn that solo, and play it as much as you possibly humanly can play it until you understand what makes it so special. Because I don't think it's the notes and I don't think it's, it's the sound. It's just a, a big conglomerate of all of that phrased that the way that David phrased it. And on that, I think that's it, guys. You have all the tools you need to hit the tone on Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd. I really, really hope that you enjoyed that video. I hope that maybe you learned a thing or two. If so, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. We greatly appreciate that. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section what song you'd like to see here in the future, and I'll get to you as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, I wish you all a fantastic week and I'll see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit The Top.